Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. We've got a big 10 race program and this meeting coincides with the opening night of the Inter Dominion series in Sydney and the local program at Albion Park, it's a ripper. There's highlights of plenty. So there's a lot to talk about with our two drivers coming up in this edition of Weekend Winners. And it's proudly brought to you by One Equine. We're going to be speaking with our young guns, Angus Garrard, fresh off win number 150 for the season earlier this week, and Pete McMullen, who continues with his quest for win number 300 this season, looking to become the first Queensland driver to register 300 wins in a season. So as you would expect, they've both got good books of drives, and they've got plenty to talk about in this edition of Weekend Winners. Angus Garrard jumps in the hot seat to go through his book of drives now, and he joins us. Angus, appreciate the time. Thanks for having me, Chris. Hey, congratulations. 150 wins on the board for the season. That's a, uh, that's a huge milestone. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, obviously pretty satisfying to get there. and um, I think only my third season, so I'm pretty happy with that. Just got to try and keep it up now. You know, we're checking the records. That could be a record. Fastest 150 by a driver of your age because you're only 18. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure myself, but be interesting to see. Yeah, absolutely. Race two on Saturday night, your first drive. Key Largo, he's been super for you, this horse. Uh, albeit a lot of his racing has been in the veterans grade of late. He's dropping, well, dropping out of that grade and going into this uh, grade on Saturday night, the Band 5 company. But you can't knock his recent form. You've been with him his last eight stars, three wins in that, uh, in that stretch. He's going as well as ever. Yeah, that's right, Chris. He's flying this horse. Um, sort of hasn't put in a bad run for me, so um, hopefully we can keep that going on Saturday night. There's going to be pace in this race. You look at that front line, BMAC C roll with Rocky, Street Kid, so that's going to help you. You should get a nice clean run, at th uh, run through at the start here. Yeah, that's right. Um, while it's probably not his ideal draw, um, it's not terrible, so if we can sort of hustle through a little bit and stay close to the action, I'm sure he's good enough. Okay. Ella Gwill is an interesting horse here. He was able to take out that Good money race last Saturday night, the opener, but he's got gate seven. But he's been really impressive winning his pass too. Do you rate him as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, he was awesome last week, I thought. You know, burnt really hard early and sort of kept it reasonably solid during the middle half and still um, reeled home in 26 and a piece. So, um, yeah, I thought he was really good. Okay, so there is depth in this race, but you're happy with the way Key Largo's going and you think he can run another really good race? Yeah, I think so. Right. Let's move across to race number five on Saturday night. Young Conqueror have picked up this drive, and I find this guy an interesting runner here. Uh, his sectionals last week were really impressive. The draw on paper probably looks a little sticky, but how do you rate his chances? Yeah, look, he's sort of been racing pretty good lately, Chris. Um, obviously, my first drive behind him, I don't know a heap about him, but um, as you said, his sectionals were really good. While he probably didn't look overly impressive on the screen, he... Um, his sections on paper were really strong, so um, I'm not sure whether this is as strong a race as last week, so hopefully he can be close to the action. Yeah, I tend to agree. I, I think it's probably a little easier for him this week, young Conqueror. Horse to beat, no doubt, from the draw, Glen Eagle Warrior. Yeah, for sure. He's been racing really consistent, and you can't really knock his form, so... OK. Race number six. This is a really good two-year-old race here. Leap to Fame steps out. You're with last week's winner, Bangkok DJ. He's got gate two, Leap to Fame, the only runner off the second row. But there's others here in this race that are certainly going to make a, a solid case. Misty Creek, away we go. Obi Legal, Eugenie and Racy Roxy. And Goldie's a delight. Were you happy with uh, your guy last week, Bangkok DJ? Yeah, I was really happy with him, Chris. Um, he did that really well within himself. Like, I never even turned the whip. I never pulled the plugs or anything. Um, he sort of did that pretty comfortable. We were just making sure we got around um, in one piece and he was really good. His gait was super and he drove really well. Up the straight here as we watch the replay, did he just have that tendency just to switch off? Did he want to sort of run up the track a little bit? What was happening there in that final 50? Yeah, he just sort of switched off a little bit but in saying that he was sort of all blocked up and with the ear hood on he sort of couldn't hear anything couldn't see anything so um i don't blame him at all he sort of i was pretty confident i had him covered so i never sort of hustled him too hard okay he's going to be uh, third up here on saturday night so he should be nearing peak fitness last week when he was able to win no doubt you were aided by that frantic early half it was just relentless that pressure do you expect good pressure again early do you do you drive him cold again from that good draw yeah, it's probably a race where there's either going to be a heap of pressure early or none, um, with Misty Creek drawn in one there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. We've just sort of got to 
well, option uh, priority one is sort of just get out safe early and make sure we do everything right again. But um, obviously, if we can be handy, it'd be good. But I don't think it really worries him. He's sort of got a fair bit of class and that'll sort of carry him through a fair way, I think. He's still very inexperienced, this horse. So he's still not smooth early? Yeah, that's right. Um, he's only had the four starts. He's won two of them. The other two, he's done things wrong. So, um, yeah, he's not just, not quite 100% out off the arm if we sort of had to hustle, but um, we'll just look after him and I'm sure he'll get better and better every time he steps out. Is Leap to Fame the horse you're most concerned about there? Oh, I think it's hard to knock Leap to Fame. Um, he was good a couple of weeks ago and um, obviously went down and took a, took on the big guns in Sydney and certainly didn't disgrace himself, I don't think. So he's sort of probably the real one to beat. Okay. Race nine, Sir Fahrenheit, last start feature race winner. He's uh, lining up in what should be a very competitive trot race. Standing start conditions. How's he going to go going from the mobile that he's past couple back to the stand start? Is he sensible? Will he handle the occasion on Saturday night? Yeah, I can't see why to worry him, Chris. Um, he's always been good going from stand to mobile and mobile to stand. So I don't think it'll worry him. How did he feel last time out? Buried away on the inside there, three back. He looks like he's just going so easily. He just needed that little bit of luck. And once he got it, he was able to sprout wings. So did he feel as you know good as he looked? Yeah, he was awesome. Um, he sort of, I was pretty confident if we got clear sort of coming into the straight, he'd run him down. So um, I was really pleased with his run and he sort of did it pretty comfortable in the end, really. So um, I'd sort of said after that race, he felt in the run if we sort of had to go 55 or quicker in that race to win he sort of felt ready so um, yeah he's been really good Okay you've run down Red Castleton there he's now stepping out in the interheat on Saturday night so the form's okay and a lot of those horses you beat there are going to be your main dangers again this weekend Yeah that's right obviously the handicaps come into play but um, as you said he sort of beat them all before it's just going to be a matter of getting the right sort of run He is a track record holder at this trip as well isn't he yeah, that's right. He loves the 2600 stand. All right. Well, that's a good drive there, Sir Fahrenheit. This is a good drive as well in the final race, the three-year-old. This is a cracking race. Manila Playboy, third up. Is he ready to go? Because the two runs back have been excellent. Yeah, I think so, Chris. Um, he's improved a lot off each run. and He's sort of coming back and pulling up better and better. So hopefully he's sort of close to 100% this time. And um, I think he's certainly right in it. Okay, we mentioned Ella Guila earlier. This was the horse that beat Manila Playboy last week. But you must have been thrilled the way he sort of attacked the line. Like, he, he ran through the line. He was strong. Yeah, I was super happy with him, Chris. Um, he sort of had to go himself for that bit. And then um, when sort of Bray Beach moved in front of us there, he sort of just dropped off a little bit sort of as we straightened. We didn't get sort of a really clean um, run into the straight with full momentum. So I was really happy with the way he came off the helmet and surged the line. So a uh, front line draw only here on Saturday night. So they're all starting uh, behind the gate uh, off the front row. Big Wheels has uh, drawn the inside. Is he the horse to beat from the inside? Or do you think there might be some early pressure? If there is, that will certainly help. Yeah, Big Wheels is probably the one to beat. Um, sort of not sure who's going to have a crack at him there. But it'll be interesting to see. Um, either way, it's sort of not going to worry us too much. We've just sort of got to drive what's in front of us and see what happens so um obviously if there's pressure it'll help but okay well it's a solid book of drives for you there on saturday night a bit of power towards the back end of the program which is the runner that you're most looking forward to um probably the two-year-old's very exciting bangkok dj um i think he'll just get better and better and i think he's going to be a really good horse in time to come okay race six number two bangkok dj again congratulations for that milestone earlier this week over 150 wins for you for the season. So a huge number in so many ways. Really appreciate the time. Best of luck on the weekend. Thanks, Chris. Pete McMullen, as we know, he's making this quest for 300. He's not too far away, and he's got a big book on Saturday night, and he joins us now. Pete, appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. We start with a really good race. These $20,000 events always attract high-quality fields. This race is no exception. Major Fernco, who won the Open last week, starts here, drawn in gate four. Just on last week, how did you rate him last week? Um, I was really disappointed that he had to sort of race the Opens. Um, you know, I just don't think it's fair on these sort of horses progressing through the grades. Um, I know he came out and won, and he, leading into the race, I still gave him a good chance, but 
you know, I, I just think it's hard on him to sort of back up, you know, week after week, racing the out of class. Okay, so he's got gate four here Saturday night. Ideal World, who led up and who you're following in this replay from last week, has drawn on your inside in gate three. Where does that leave you early? Yeah, it's a really tricky little sort of race to map out for him. And, um, you know, he, he's racing really well and we sort of um, he's been getting good trips. So we're going to have to try and get him a good trip again, which I, I think he, you know, he, he's such a good little racehorse. So I, I think we can sort of navigate one and hopefully stay in the sort of, you know, the front half of the field and, and um, be nice and handy. And I think um, he's got to be a good chance again. OK, it is a good quality race. You've got Scarlet Bay, one ideal world, three. Governor Juge on your, on your outside in five. And Deus Ex, who hasn't been cited since that little indiscretion at the start of the Be Good Johnny Sprint. They look to be the main players? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it, these races, they're really attracting really good fields. It's a credit to Racing Queensland for putting them on. And so they're going to add a new one and have two a week soon. So that's uh, really exciting as well. OK, now just with Major Fernco, he had that little bit of a... Uh, you know, uh, a down patch uh, midway through the season, but he, he looks like he's right back at the peak of his powers right now. Yeah, um, you know, so this time last year he was racing really well, and we thought he was sort of right up with the Black Sedans and Will the Wizard, and he had a bit of a bit of a break and he didn't come back, and you know, we sort of just put it down to fitness, and he's a real nugget little, little fella, and. Um, took a lot of racing to get him right, but he, he seems sort of back on top of his game now. OK. Race number two on Saturday night. You picked up the drive on Colonel Joy. Veteran performer, but he's fit and firing. He's drawn the inside of the second row. That's not a bad spot to be when you look at this field. No, it's probably the best spot in the run, you know, for this guy. He sort of, um, he loves the rails, and I think if he gets a nice suck along, and I think he's going to be in with a shot. It looks like this race is going to generate early pressure as well. B-Max E-Roll with Rocky, Street Kid, they're all likely to go hard early. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, these races, that they're, they're very good competitive races. So, you know, um, you know, whatever horse sort of sort of has, has the most luck, it usually sort of wins them. All right. Race number three, you've picked up the drive on Square Dealer. A few runs ago now, he put in a couple of good runs, and I thought, oh, maybe sort of building towards another victory. But his last couple have been a little disappointing. He's got gate seven here over the mile. It's not ideal, is it? No, he's sort of been a little bit up and down his form and, you know, put in a couple of good runs and then a couple of ordinary ones. So, um, you know, he's sort of shown that he's definitely good enough, but just trying to get into race genuine is a little bit tricky. All right, race four, this is the free-for-all. Black Sedans and Will the Wizard, you had the choice. Did you agonise over the choice? A little bit. Um, yeah, I sort of, you know, I love both these boys and, you know, they've both got very good chances, I, I think, and I end up sort of opting for Black Sedans and... Um, you know, there's not much between them and it's hard to sort of pick and, um, yeah, I just went for, went for him this week and I think he's going to run a really good race. Were you disappointed when you picked up the field and saw turn it up in one? Yeah, but in saying that, it doesn't really matter where he draws on the front line, he sort of tends to clear anyway, so at least he's drawn one and we don't have to worry about him crossing us. OK, Black Sedans, let's focus on him. He's passed two runs during the Summer Carnival features. The Be Good Johnny Sprint, fourth, drawn eight. And then last week, or last start, in the, the Queensland Cup, drawn eight again, he runs fourth. He was really good in both of those races. Yeah, he's, you know, his former late's been super. He, um, you know, he just sort of keeps getting better and better all the time. And, um, yeah, obviously this week he's going to probably do a bit of work, which is not going to be ideal. But, um, you know, he's sort of shown that he's really right up to these open-class horses and, you know, he's got to be in with a really good chance. So is he just a slow maturing type? Say next July when we've got the carnival again, the Tab Constellations, he should really be at the peak of his powers by then, shouldn't he? Oh, I think so. He's just got better and better. He, he sort of loves the racing, loves his work, and um, he's really developed into a really nice sort of racehorse. And, you know, early doors he was a little bit dumb and, and didn't sort of uh, know what he was doing. He used to make a few mistakes and that, but now he's really sort of put it all together and He's just such a lovely horse. All right, give us a snapshot on, on Will the Wizard. He went bang, 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 disappointed his next two. What can we expect? Look, um, you know, the stable was really happy with the horse going into him, um, that sprint race the other week, and he, you know, it just didn't work out. The draw was against him, the trip was against him. He's, he's not a first over horse, and, um, you know, that sort of really showed. And obviously, the start after, you, you know, it's hard to back up a week later after sort of having such a downer. So, you know... <laughs> There's no reason why he, he can't run a good race. He, he loves the mile and, you know, there's nothing between him and Black Dance. So if we give Black Dance a good chance, there's no reason why Will the Wizard won't be right there with him. Can Turn It Up be beaten from the inside gate? Well, Turn It Up, he's, um, you know, he's, he's a very good horse. He's got great gate speed. Looks like he's going to dictate. But um, just of late, he doesn't seem to be able to sort of run a very sort of strong mile, which both Black Dance, Will the Wizard and other runners in this race, they can sort of really cut hard miles. So... 
It could be an interesting race. Mm, look forward to it. That's race four, race five. You know this guy well, a recipe for dreaming. Unfortunately, he's got a bad gate at the outside of the second row. Any sort of ex expectations here? Yeah, it's a really tricky sort of draw. He, he loves being up, up sort of close. Um, you know, when, he, when he's up close, he can really run a good race, but it's sort of hard to get into it and, and sort of chase hard. But with a little bit of luck, hopefully he can be hitting the line strong. OK, race six, the two-year-old. Good quality two-year-old as well. Away we go. He's third up. What are we expecting this weekend? Yeah, fingers crossed for you know really good showing. Um, you know he, he raced super first up and and then uh, second up just things didn't go our way and hopefully he can bounce back this week and if he can um, you know if he can maybe find the front I think he'd be very hard to beat but a little bit of speed inside of us we've got the um, you know Lola's horse there racing so well and hopefully we can um, you know just sort of get a good trip I think. Well, I was going to ask, can you get an easy lead here from gate three? Well, it, it's tricky, you know, Misty Plains, he's been sort of leading midweek races and looking so impressive and, um, you know, you would expect the same sort of tactics here, but even though it's a stronger race, but if we happen to get across, which, you know, we, we sort of show we've got pretty good gate speed, so, um, you know, fingers crossed we can clear and I think if he clears, it'd be hard to beat. Okay, leap to fame, he is beatable? Um, he's a very, very good horse, I think I'm his biggest admirer, um, absolutely love him, but yeah, He's going to be hard to beat, but I think he is beatable. Okay, race seven on Saturday night. Got to have a hobby. He's drawn out in six, and there's a lot of speed to your inside, in particular with Juddy Douglas in two. He's likely to make it a, a, a true test here. Yeah, definitely. Um, hopefully, well, it's going to be a truly run race. So, you know, this guy, he sort of loves a bit of a suck along. So if we can get a suck along, he'll be um, right there at the finish. All right. Let's move across to race nine, the trot. Majestic Simon placed at his pass two. Uh, stand start conditions again here on the weekend. You've got a handicap of 30 metres. Is he getting back to his best? Slowly but surely. Um, obviously still way down of his you know, absolute best. But, you know, each week he's just sort of getting a little bit better and feeling a little bit better. And um, the handicap, you know, hasn't been real kind again. His form, you know, being so far down. And he uh, hasn't won quite a while. But, you know, fingers crossed he can step safely. And if he can step, you know, be away close, so I think that'll uh, be a big benefit to him. Okay, the last on Saturday night, race 10, this is the three-year-old and this is a really good race to close out the program. Big Wheels is going to run favourite, he's got the inside draw, third up, can he take them all the way? Well, um, I think the draw obviously is our biggest advantage, he sort of probably hasn't drawn inside these better horses all season, and um, which is the reason why he's drawn barrier one, he's sort of down on wins, but um, you know, he's run some very bold races and and done all the work in, in the run. So, fingers crossed he can sort of, you know, hopefully have a bit, bit softer lead this week and we can sort of dictate or, or at least rate how we want to rate and um, hopefully be too strong, even though there's going to be some very good chases. Yeah, absolutely. That's a high quality three year old race to, uh, to close out the program. Out of all of those drives, which one are you looking forward to most? Yeah, look, it's, it's going to be a sort of tricky night and, uh, you know, fingers crossed we can just get uh, a couple more wins and get close to that 300. Well, you're getting there slowly but surely, but time is on your side, so there's no need to hit the panic button just yet. <laughs> I think it started already happened. <laughs> hey, Pete, really appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside on the weekend. No worries. Thank you. A big thanks to both Angus and Pete giving up their time and insight for their drives ahead of Saturday night's cart at Albion Park, and we wish them the best of luck. Time now for a good thing on Saturday night. I think we've found his race on Saturday night. We're talking about a Glen Eagle Warrior. Race five, number one. Drawn to lead. He's been uh, able to lead in these past couple of starts, but he's been run down. I don't think they'll get to him on Saturday night. I'm confident he can go all of the way, and the Eagle will land this Saturday night. So he's our best bet. Race five, number one, Glen Eagle Warrior. Looking forward to this card of racing coming through. We'll see you trackside.